We're about halfway through the year at the moment, so it's a good time to check in and see what some of the top games of 2021 are. So 2020 was a big year for games, given the new consoles, plus games like The Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima and Hades. Well, today I'm going to go through my top 10 games of 2021 so far. I'm going to go through the list in terms of how I rate the game, so worst to best. And I think we've got plenty more great games coming out this year, so I'm sure this list is going to evolve as we go towards the end of 2021. But this is a good sense check of where we are right now. There's most likely some games in here you've heard of, but maybe one or two that you haven't, so hopefully there's some good ideas for some new games to pick up. Well, first of all, we've got Loop Hero. So Loop Hero does what it says on the tin. You are a hero who travels in a constant loop, battling and building up your stats as you go. So rather than the traditional method of controlling a hero in the game, you look down on the loop from above and place tiles and select weapons and items for the hero, which helps generate materials and other benefits too. So Loop Hero is really going to make you wonder where the time has gone. Even though your hero is trudging around in a loop over and over, there's something about this game both satisfying and addicting. So you can check it out on PC now. Next up, we've got Cyber Shadow. So Cyber Shadow is an action platformer which harks back to the days of 8-bit games in both graphical style, but also in its difficulty too. And it takes inspiration from the classic 2D side-scrolling action, tricky platformers with precise controls. So the gameplay in Cyber Shadow is inspired by Ninja Gaiden, and it's your job to navigate the world armed with only a sword to begin with, use jumps, dodges, and attacks to remove the enemies from your path. Well, the controls are pretty simple, and you can attack and jump, and that is pretty much it, until you open up a series of power-ups later on in the game. Cyber Shadow eases you in nice and gentle on the first level, but then the difficulty really ramps up as you get past that first stage. Enemies are going to attack from the air, the ground, and throw projectiles, so you're going to have to have your wits about you at all times. So this one is available on a variety of platforms, but I got it on Xbox Game Pass. Well, next up, we've got Narita Boy. So Narita Boy is an action Metroidvania with a mix of platforming set in a techno-futuristic world that's gorgeous to the eyes and also the ears too. It's got a retro feel, but scratched below the surface, and this is very much a modern game. Narita Boy is heavily inspired by the 80s in terms of visual design and music. The world is bright and vibrant and the soundtrack is heavy on the synth. And at first glance it looks like a retro game but it's more retro inspired with modern day mechanics. And there's a constant CRT filter over the screen that just adds to the theme. Now, it's difficult to go into too much detail in the game but it's worth downloading and checking it out and it has all the right attributes to be a hit. Now, it's available on Xbox Game Pass so if you're a subscriber then you already own the game. So Metroidvanias have been everywhere over the past few years. Some are great and some are definitely worth a miss. However, I'd say Narita Boy is really, really worth experiencing. The graphics, the music all work really well together and the storytelling is top notch. You know, it may be vague at times, but everything from the pixel inspired cutscenes to the immense amount of NPC dialogue and the world building makes this one worth exploring and spending a lot of time in. Well, next up, we've got Before Your Eyes. So Before Your Eyes is a narrative adventure with a difference. So instead of controlling using a mouse or a controller, you blink to control the game. And the mechanic is more than just a novelty in a powerful narrative game that will take you on a roller coaster of emotions. And it's taking a strong claim to be one of the best games of 2021 so far. Just don't blink or you're definitely going to miss it. So much of the game is a lean back style and watch the narrative play out. However, when you blink, time will jump forward. So maybe it's going to be a day or a week or even years forward and the game does require a webcam to be set up to register the blinks, but it's easy to do and works surprisingly well. So if playing with a webcam sounds like it's not for you, there's also good news because it can be played with a traditional input like a mouse or a keyboard. So Before Your Eyes is a really well put together game that innovates in both the controls and tells a very touching personal story throughout the narrative. And it mixes in little puzzles and decisions. And while they don't affect the direction of the narrative too much, they do complement the gameplay really, really well. It's not too long and it's a very memorable experience and a unique little gem that's definitely worth checking out. Well, next up, we've got Valheim. So Valheim is one of the latest indie hits to blow up on Steam following the likes of Fall Guys and Among Us that went viral in 2020. So Valheim is a survival game currently in early access that came out at the start of February 2021 and has taken the world by storm. So activities range from building a camp, hunting, fighting wild boar and also world bosses too. And there's something really approachable about Valheim and players are flocking to it in droves. So Valheim can be played with up to nine other friends on a server. It's probably best enjoyed with between two and five other people. 
And when the game first starts, you start with pretty much nothing, and you start off simple by cutting down trees and punching poor little animals to death to turn them into tasty dinners later on. And Valheim came out of the blue for me and had a really, really strong start, and the world you inhabit is a beautiful one, and the adventures that Valheim throw at you, they're really fun, they're unique, and really immersive too. So the game is definitely better with friends, but offers you a nice chilled experience if you want to fly solo. So visually, it's got its own style which harks back to the MMO days have gone by, and Valheim's mechanics may be a collection of simple activities, but they've been put together really well and they just simply work, and it all adds up to a really satisfying experience. You can check it out in early access on Steam now. Well, next up we've got Outriders. So Outriders is one of the newest looter shooters on the market from People Can Fly. So I was sceptical about Outriders at first and mildly hyped for the full release. I'm a massive fan of looter shooters, having put hundreds of hours into Destiny, Destiny 2, and tens of hours into The Division and Avengers as well. And the thing that really drew me to Outriders was the build potential, as this is something I really enjoy with Destiny. Looking at the combination of classes, weapons and armour and mods that go well together to create a fun and engaging gameplay styles. And on first impressions, and on first impressions, Outriders has all the right ingredients. So Outriders had a pretty good start, and it's probably not going to win any Game of the Year awards. And in terms of popularity, it had one of the best launches the genre has seen for some time. You know, Anthem died, the Division 2 fizzled away, and the Avengers is really, really struggling. There's plenty of promise in Outriders. I'm really looking forward to getting into the game a little bit more, and hopefully with multiple legendaries in my hands. Well, next up, we've got Returnal. So Returnal is a PlayStation 5 exclusive from Housemark. It's a punishing, interesting game filled with euphoric highs, jump scares, and also dramatic low points too. It's one of the best demonstrations of the PS5 to date, in particular with fantastic audio design that is rarely experienced anywhere else. You know, this game is probably going to divide crowds but it's simply one that you have to try. There's a decent mix of genres in Returnal, so one minute you're going to be exploring, platforming, and the next minute you're going to be in a bullet hell style battle with an enemy tentacle thrashing and threatening you instant death. And there is an infinite loop of the roguelike genre, which many will be familiar with since Hades broke through in 2020, and Returnal has layers, and you have to dig pretty deep and work hard with your skill and time to find out everything that this game has to offer. So Returnal is definitely an endurance test of a video game. So in the early hours, you're in discovery mode, learning about the planet and the monsters and the attack patterns, and you're just going to be staring at wonder at most things in the game. As time goes by, the game becomes more and more punishing, and it's going to take a particular type of player to want to jump back in time and time again. But if you do like this style of game, or if any of the above sounds like it's for you, then I would definitely recommend Returnal. It's truly a next-generation game and shows off the wide array that the PS5 can do. Now, I really like that Sony is investing in this type of game. It's tough, it's different, and it's going to make you laugh with delight and cry with loss. Now, I don't know if I'm the type of player to want to jump back in time and time again with Returnal, but I am impressed with what Housemarque has produced, and if you have access to a PlayStation 5, then it's definitely worth checking out. Well, next up, we've got Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is the latest game from Insomniac, creators of Marvel Spider-Man, the PlayStation exclusive, and this one is another iteration on the fast-paced action and adventure games Insomniac have been producing in recent years. So whether you're new to the Ratchet & Clank series or a seasoned veteran, this one is bound to bring a smile to your face through its thoroughly enjoyable gameplay. You know, Rift Apart is simply a stunning game, there's no question about it, and since the game was revealed in the summer of 2020, it's demonstrated the power of the PlayStation 5 very well, feeling like you're playing a Pixar movie, and this is a demo of what video games could be, and it lives up to the promise of what next-generation consoles deliver. So Spider-Man, Miles Morales look great, but this is a whole different kettle of fish, and specifically made for the PlayStation 5. So one of the things I really appreciated about the game, it's not too long, coming in at roughly 12 hours or so for a regular playthrough, and about 15 hours if you want to find all the secrets. Not all games have to be 60 hours, and I feel this really respects my time. Now, I'm not saying I don't want more, because the gameplay is so fluid and fun. However, in my life at the moment, this is the perfect sized game for me. Now, I've been given enough, and I'm left wanting more, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't feel padded out or repetitive, and it's the Goldilocks of games, and it gets it just about right. 
So Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart looks like it could have come from the future to demonstrate the current gen consoles and what they could do in a few years time and it's great to see games embracing the capabilities of the new consoles and showing them off. This is a game that struts with confidence and checking out the videos and streams doesn't really do the visuals justice. It's not just a good looking game, the story is well formed and flows with ease and the fluidity of the movement and action is hands down some of the best you're going to play in the sheen of quality shines through with every level and encounter. So if you've got a PS5, this is simply a must-buy title. Well, next up, we've got Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. So the final entry in the Super Mario 35th anniversary celebration is Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. So Super Mario 3D World is the latest game to be ported to Nintendo Switch from the Wii U, given its original release back in 2013. And Bowser's Fury is a brand new short title accompanying Super Mario 3D World, and these two games offer different sides of the Mario series style. So many people, myself included, missed out on this Super Mario 3D World when it first came out nearly eight years ago. And the title was given a new lease of life and a massive audience with Nintendo Switch owners, and it's already shot to the third best-selling Mario title on Nintendo Switch ahead of Super Mario Maker 2 and New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe and behind Super Mario Odyssey and Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Well, the gameplay is really, really fun, and there's lots of connections here. So with Bowser's Fury, the gameplay is really fun. There's lots of connections here to Super Mario 3D World from a stylistic point of view, and also some of the gameplay elements. And this feels much more like Super Mario Odyssey, albeit without the use of Cappy. So Plessy makes a return from 3D World to help you swim and complete some tasks. And Bowser interrupting can be a little bit annoying at times, especially if you're high up and you may get knocked all the way down to the lower levels. But it's a small thing when compared to the overall fun you're going to have with Bowser's Fury. So Super Mario 3D World alone was enough to convince me to get this package, given I had missed it the first time around, and I highly recommend this game if you haven't played it, but also recommend playing it co-op. For me, it was great to play through with the misses. You know, we tried other co-op games before, but it never felt quite as good as this one. Bowser's Fury is a short but sweet outing for Mario, and it kind of feels like it was something created in a short space of time and lockdown by Nintendo and given to the audience as an incentive to buy 3D World again. I'm really not against Nintendo experimenting with these shorter titles like this, and there's some really nice innovative gameplay moments in here. And this one could be a look into the future of Mario with this open world style. Well next up we've got my top game of 2021 so far, and it's Monster Hunter Rise. So Monster Hunter Rise is the newest mainline Monster Hunter game, and it's the first dedicated to a Nintendo Switch from the ground up. So this is the total package, offering a smooth onboarding for new players, depth and also complexity, plus potentially hundreds of hours of gameplay. There's a certain speed and fluidity to Monster Hunter Rise that I haven't encountered before, so running into battle at full speed on the back of your Palamute canine buddy, jumping in at the right time and swinging your sword, axe or hammer right into the huge monster's face. You land it and then pull off a seamless combo to finish the hunt. So Monster Hunter Rise is one of the latest additions to Monster Hunter Family and exploded in popularity since the release of Monster Hunter World back in 2018. And Monster Hunter fans would protest, saying this was hugely popular before World and Iceborne were even thought of, but Monster Hunter World took it to new levels in the West. Monster Hunter Rise does a great job as a follow-up and now has the added bonus of being able to play it on the go, on the sofa or in bed with Nintendo Switch. Now I've still got loads more to discover in Monster Hunter Rise, but I do find myself thinking about it when I'm not in the world. I'm looking up weapon guides while I'm taking my daily walks, I'm actively seeking weapon tutorials to understand new combos and how to unleash more powerful attacks. So it's always a great sign if a game gets inside your head and you're thinking about strategies when you're away from the screen. And the simple fact that now I could take Monster Hunter with me on my travels is absolutely fantastic. You know, I've really enjoyed my time with Monster Hunter Rise, and I'd recommend it to anyone who has a Nintendo Switch. It's got the potential to be one of the best and the biggest Nintendo Switch games out there. The learning curve may be steep, but the rewards are huge if you can push through those small roadblocks. The game is charming, it's going to make you laugh at times. There's the pain of defeat and also the triumph of a successful hunt. You know, it's really got the whole package. You can get by by scratching the surface of a Monster Hunter game, but it's only going to get you so far. These games are designed with hundreds of hours of play in mind, and I'm finally starting to understand why there's such a fervorous fan base of the series. I only wish I discovered this title earlier. So plenty of great games in there for 2021 so far. There's some big hitters like Monster Hunter Rise, Ratchet and Clank, but there's also some indie titles too like Loop Hero, Valheim and Before Your Eyes, plus some remakes too with Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. So there are some games in here that I've missed including It Takes Two, 
Resident Evil Village, Hitman 3, and plenty more, but maybe I'll get around to checking out those later on in the year. In particular, It Takes Two looks very good, plus an excellent co-op experience. Well, that is it for my best game of 2021 so far, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. If you want to join the community, check out the Discord link in the description, or you can follow me on Twitter at TWIFG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again, and see you soon.